the third uh, case discussion of the series. Uh, so <clears throat> look at this uh, clinical scenario. Uh, take a while and read it. So again, <clears throat> it is uh, coming as an emergency and the task for us is to make a diagnosis and as I said in my first presentation, we have to identify an organ and a pathology. So what are the clues in this history that will lead you to identify? One thing is the sight, the right heart contour. So you have to think of organs in that part. And then there is pain. So the pathology has to be something which produces pain. And it is for three days. So it is likely to be an acute pathology. So the organs concerning will be of course, could it be something in the uh, abdominal wall or the, maybe uh, the costal margin. But more often it's likely to be either the liver, the gallbladder, the bile ducts or maybe even the lower maybe the tongue and of course maybe something in the diaphragm and then what are the painful conditions that we spoke of the leading one is of course inflammatory or it may be a stone causing a colic but the liver now say liver is infiltrated with uh, either secondary deposits or has a primary liver tumor which is enlarging this also can cause pain but of course the history is three days so it is more likely to be an acute pathology where the person comes with a casualty but of course even a liver tumor someday there will be a start so I mean even though it is low in the list it could be but anyway so and also the age Maybe certain diseases are more common than in a lady. So, what are the questions that we have to ask to find the balance? The organ, of course, okay. So, we have a picture and by the sight. But, of course, the, the things that I said were the functional changes. But, in time, we can find. Okay. But, anyway, just to pick the pathology, maybe first because there's pain so we have idea whether it's an inflammatory or or a colic the top in the list immediately below would be tumor so to distinguish between inflammatory pain or a colic the first question that one should ask just think for a pause the video think for 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 a second and see so it's a type of the pain is it a colicky pain or is it a persistent pain? If it's a, if it's a colicky, a severe pain, sudden onset severe pain recurring during the three days, very likely to be a biliary colic, right under control. Supposing it was a persistent pain, then it is more likely to be either inflammatory, very likely to be inflammatory in this patient, but of course, who knows, it may be a liver tumor. So, now we have come to a higher level in our thinking. Pain of the right hypochondrium persistent three days. So it is colic is out, gallbladder stones out. In the sense, call gallbladder stones causing a colic is out. So now our first thing should be to confirm that it's inflammatory. So is there fever? The patient says yes, I have fever, and my pain is gradually getting worse or more. So tumor is unlikely. So now we have the organs in the right hypochondrium with the inflammatory pathology. So the differential diagnosis. These are the organs and the inflammatory pathologies. So now in the history of the presenting complaint, we have to distinguish one from another. So the best would be to ask here. I mean, there are there are a lot of things in the pain inquiry like relieving factors, aggravating factors, radiation, 
but here given this four diagnosis as possible so not a, not a pain inquiry something different will give you a clue to separate two from the other two that's just pause the video think for a while see when you get the answer it is jaundice because if there is jaundice so you ask the patient he will not know jaundice he may not know what is jaundice but very unlikely not know so ask whether your uh, urine color is dark and whether you have noticed that your eyes are getting yellow it is as yes two diagnoses are possible it could be a hepatitis or an acute cholangitis so if it is yes then you have to distinguish between these two where acute cholangitis will the person, person will be more ill and the fever will be uh, very high till zygos and he may give a history of, of a colic before because it's a usually a stone in the gallbladder contracts strongly gets a severe colic it expels into the bile duct and the bile duct stone causes a cholangitis you may get this history also supposing there is no jaundice which was actually in this person I'm discussing he didn't have a jaundice or she didn't have a jaundice so two possibilities it could be acute cholecystitis or nodal pneumonia and think for a second how I'm going to distinguish with these two it's very straightforward ask the respiratory symptoms in your systemic inquiry so if there's cough productive luteum patient is feeling breathless pleurotic pain like to be pneumonia but in this type of situation right now when your pain fever most of the time it will be acute cholecystitis so they will have no respiratory symptoms unless the acute cholecystitis is complicated by or seen patient septic or something like that generally most of the cases they, their respiration will be all right so this person summarizing came with right hypochondrial pain for three days and then we asked fever yes and no jaundice so we make a clinical diagnosis of acute cholecystitis so balance of the history in the upper GI inquiries just to see how uh, ill the patient is maybe ask about nausea appetite vomiting because you get a general idea how to manage this patient and then a systemic inquiry for spread we have already asked and then it's just pain because in the person maybe some kind of pathology is also there something about the urinary symptom something about the bowel and then of course as I said earlier all parts of the history are important to treat the patient so your past medical history the patient may be on uh, various medications which has to be continued in the hospital especially diabetic if his diabetics control is not good your acute cholecystitis is going to get worse and if it's on anticoagulants like aspirin or some people very rarely you get some people coming on warfarin so whether whether you have to stop them in case the patient needs some surgery but if you're going to step what are the precautions you're to, you're going to take because anticoagulants are given for some particular reason there are some patients that you can't stop anticoagulation like a cardiac valve replacement you can't stop the warfarin you have to put on a bridging heparin and then stop it because it's very dangerous under this so it's very important the other part of the history past surgical history supposing he has had some laparotomy in the past so your laparoscopic cholecystectomy is going to be difficult for him and other parts of the history are also important his social habits his job everything counts you can say of treating a patient so once that history is taken now we have diagnosis of acute cholecystitis in hand and a general uh, situation of the patient and by examining we have to confirm so what are the focus physical signs that we look for for in acute cholecystitis now even though the patient denied of jaundice uh, it may be that he has this so it's important that you look at his sclera is it uh, yellow and look for any pallor take the temperature and cardiovascular respiratory examination are the confirmatory signs will be in the abdomen and generally acute cholecystitis is confined to the right abdomen so rest of the abdomen will be generally soft and not tender but right hypochondria will be definitely tender and you have the Murphy's sign positive take your physical science book after the end of the discussion read how to elicit 
Murphy's son. Don't post it. Just read it after the after this presentation. Read how to elicit the Murphy's son. So now we have confirmed your clinical diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. You have to confirm it and take a second and think what is your what is your diagnostic invest investigations to investigation to make confirm your clinical diagnosis. I'm sure you have thought of ultrasound scan, and here you can see that there are stones in the gallbladder, and there is edema of the wall, and there is pericholecystic fluid. So think about the previous case with the biliary canal. The, the, the wall was thin and distended. So here also it's distended with fluid due to inflammation, and in addition, edema, sign of acute inflammation, will be there, and also pericholecystic fluid. So even this is same thing, the stones in the gallbladder because the, the presentation is different, they are ischemically and here comes the inflammation, the other features are different. So with ultrasound scan, the radiologist can say whether this is just a colic or whether he has acute cholecystitis and also when the radiologist press, press on the tummy, there will be what is called probe tenderness. So ultrasound is diagnostic, but if you do a blood white count or CRP, you can see how is he behaving? Of course, in complicated cases, you may you may see it, but otherwise, generally, ultrasound scan is good enough to manage this patient. So, in summary, a person who comes with right hypochondrial pain, persistent fever, no jaundice, Murphy's positive, ultrasound confirm the acute cholecystitis. So, how are we going to treat? Once you make the clinical diagnosis, if your ultrasound scan is going to get delayed a couple of hours, which is commonly good. And you can start treatment on your clinical judgment. So I have given some guidelines how to plan the treatment before. So take pause the video. Just write down what are the steps of management that you are going to do in the previous guideline I have given. Just write it down and think, see whether you are getting it correct. All right, this is something other thing. Just uh, read this and see. Did the radiologist say that there is gas in the gallbladder wall, not the nutri, the gallbladder wall? What is the significance of that? Just read it and see. Did it show some severe form of cholecystitis, some clue of the organism? Whether it warns you about some problems that are going to occur? But anyway, it's important to know it. Gas within the gallbladder, which is also called known as Emphysematous cholecystitis. It's called emphysematous cholecystitis. So this is the schedule I told you to think when you're treating anybody. Does this patient need resuscitation? Of course, the person the majority of acute cholecystitis, they don't need. But of course, they have, and then a person diabetic may come in sepsis. You need. So as you the patient come, as I said before, the patient will be very looking even before you make the diagnosis, you just support the patient. Symptomatic, yes, he will need some. Maybe antipyretic. Pain is of course generally not very severe, but of course uh, the antipyretic may set in the pain as well. Pharmacological, yes, definitely this patient needs intravenous antibiotics. So uh, you start on the intravenous antibiotics, something like Coamoxiclam or Kefiroxin. Flagge is not necessary, but just remember that some cases may need if there's a evidence that there is a uh, anaerobic organism. So I've given a clue in the, in the previous slide, the question I asked, maybe similar to school status. So start on I, IV antibiotic. Then the, but the only thing, there are some patients who come outpatient with early cholecystitis, may settle with oral antibiotics. It depends on the patient, on your wife. And a lot of people, they can tolerate oral uh, liquids at least, or they can take a soft diet, but if they are really ill, vomiting, of course, you may have to give some IV fluids. Then intervention. So this person has acute cholecystitis due to stones. So the current practice is to do a cholecystectomy. 
going to do? Well, you acute appendicitis, you operate uh, early. When the patient is within reasonable time, you may, during the day of admission, you do the appendicitis. But some appendicitis, they come late, you know, with mass formation, then you treat them. Of course, you can do what is called internal appendicectomy, but there's controversy whether it's necessary or not. Is a good antibiotics. But again, for acute cholecystitis, the two ways for your intervention in the cholecystectomy, you may treat with your antibiotics, get the person to settle, and you do it later, after, the, after about six weeks. But now the current thinking is just like you do your appendicectomy for acute appendicitis, do uh, within the same admission, but not don't delay, just within. 48 to 72 hours from onset of symptoms, if you can catch during that period, you do the cholecystectomy. So, there are two ways. This is called for cholecystectomy. We are doing the cholecystectomy within the first two or three days after your symptoms start. Why first two, three days? When it becomes four, five, six, it becomes difficult because your momentum will come as sealing around and the dissection is going to be difficult. Identifying the anatomy is going to be difficult. There will be bleeding. So then might as well settle the antibiotic and do it later. But if you can do like acute appendicitis first day or second day, or at least by the third day, perfectly. So this is uh, the summary of this patient. Acute cholecystitis diagnosed by right hypochondrial pain, fever persistent, no jaundice, mercury is positive, scan confirmed. You treat with antibiotics and the definitive treatments will be antibiotics and the cholecystectomy because you have some supportive treatment. There are a few things that uh, it's important that you should uh, work out, think. One thing is the timing of cholecystectomy after this I have discussed with you. And so supposing now you are going to uh, you are going to do the interval surgery that you treat with antibiotics and you are going to do after six weeks so if you are, this is the conservative management and interval surgery so so it's very important to see whether the patient is responding to your treatment so now in this so how do you know i mean it's very easy you ask the patient whether the pain is the pain bit less and you feel better you feel more hungry now and yes here so the, this person is settling the doctor looks very happy the fever has come down, patient is up and smiling and also examining, the tenderness has to go down. But there are a few patients who don't respond, they are ill, the fever is swinging, still tenderness. So then what to do? Read and think about it because now your conservative management is not working. So you have to do something different. But a majority conservative management is settled and you can do the interval process. But this problem won't come on admission if you do the early surgery. That's why some centers prefer to do that and just finish it off. And then certain uh, terms that uh, you have to know. What is a pyrocin? What is a mucosil of the gall bladder? What is gallstone ileus? What is aerobilia? And what is a calculus cholecystitis? Then you have a simple, there's no stones. Without stones, you get cholecystitis. But there are certain conditions in which this, is, this can happen. So it's important to know. So try to read around those things. And also, there is another thing. Re, uh, just uh, read what is this? Merisi syndrome. It's a variation of uh, acute cholecystitis. So what is Merisi syndrome? Important to know. Important. Sometimes these are tested in your MCQs. It's important. So, now with these two discussions we did, we have found two ways that gallbladder stones can present. In the second clinical discussion, we discuss how it can present as a biliary colic with the acute severe pain and in that case we discuss as presenting in the epigastric region 
and they are called epigastric organs, acute pathologies for the differential diagnosis and we discuss how to arrive at the diagnosis. But sometimes biliary colic, the colic may come in the right hypochondria and of course it's more straightforward. And the second thing that we discuss in today's discussion is that the whole gallbladder stones can present as acute cholecystitis. So where they are coming with inflammatory features in the right hypochondria. Inflammatory features in the right hypochondrium. So if we exclude, if it's exclude colic presentation, inflammatory condition in the right hypochondria, that these organs may be at fault and by not having jaundice, we have and also no respiratory symptoms we diagnose is acute cholecystitis and there is tenderness on palpation where it is positive RT scan so uh, we have made the diagnosis and we discuss the management so you can see even though the primary cause were the stones in the gallbladder it present to, it can present in different ways can present in different ways. So just think before the next presentation, are there any other ways that gallbladder stones can present? Thank you.